Hi everyone. This is the coil that I used in my uh, motor design with the uh, one inch steel bar and I have it uh, in another experiment here and inside there I have a one inch N50 Neo square cube magnet and there's the setup so the magnet is right inside there you can kind of see see it there a little bit and on the bottom of this board I have another magnet that's both are in uh, repelling uh, fields and uh, keeps this magnet floating here and what I've been doing is giving it a jolt and checking out the uh, rise and collecting the collapsing field and then collecting the energy when the magnet falls back down and here I have the little pulse circuit that I finally uh, am comfortable to showing and uh, again I'm not claiming any over unity or anything like that but my experiments from now on are definitely going to be based on uh, utilizing permanent magnets with a coil it's the combination of the two that I truly believe will lead us to a possibility of creating excess energy uh, pulsing coils with electricity and trying collecting energy I've done lots of that and I don't feel that's uh, going to give us uh, what we're all looking for so um, experiment with magnets compare a natural magnet like a neo magnet and you know the attraction it has for instance to a piece of steel or whatever and try to recreate that using electricity in a coil that same amount of force and attraction and you'll soon understand that there's a huge amount of uh, energy uh, that uh, it takes to create that magnetic field that the natural magnet has. And um, when you see that and you understand that, you really want to try to find a way to utilize, uh, to try to get the flux of the magnet to work in combination, in conjunction with a coil and the coil you could use some power in it but you also want the magnet to have some kind of activity and this is kind of like a an idea here uh, it's not again showing anything uh, promising but it's a good idea and you'll get the idea of what's going on is this coil here with that uh, bouncing uh, suspended magnet at a certain frequency it starts to resonate and you'll see that at a certain frequency it starts giving out power so that's what you kind of want to do you want to get a combination of a little bit of current and a coil and get that magnet to resonate when you get that combination of those two things you might possibly find excess energy and that's what I'm going to continue to study and also the generator coils because again that's using magnets and motors using permanent magnets and coils so I'll continue doing that uh, study so in this little circuit here <clears throat> we have a relay this little uh, that's actually a 24 volt relay so I've got two batteries here two 12 volt batteries in series to feed the 24 volts required for the uh, coil of that relay now the coil of that relay, I have another small little relay here that the 26 volts is uh, basically going through this 220 ohm resistor not to burn the contacts in this relay. Charging a 13 microfarad here capacitor. So I'm doing a capacitive discharge to this coil here. All right, so 24 volts is being charged in 13 microfarad and discharging at a very small fraction of a time okay and you'll see that this just does a little little the quickest pulse and that's what I did I tried to find the quickest pulse that this relay can do and um, the reason I'm using relays is I don't believe we can do this kind of thing that I want to do here with MOSFETs because MOSFETs don't totally break away the switch and what we need to do is we need to discharge, do a capacitive discharge to send that magnet up. But as soon as it discharges, you want those contacts off. So that's why I'm utilizing this uh, relay here. You can't do that, I don't think, with a MOSFET. Anyways, if somebody knows how to do it, 
that it, uh, there's no, absolutely no contact, uh, let me know about it. And here at the relay, I'm using the other half of one battery, which is at 12.97, but will be at 12.91 when it's operating. And we have another 220 ohm, again, not to burn the contacts. So when it's resting, it's charging another capacitor, and that capacitor is a very small capacitance. And let's have a look at it here. I don't even remember what it is. Um, okay, it's a 10 volt. Don't worry about it, I'm charging it at 12 volts. I know, it doesn't matter. I'm getting good results with it. That's a 470 microfarad uh, capacitor at 10 volts. And I'm charging it to about close to 13 volts. And no problem, I'll connect that back. And okay, so we have this guy triggering the coil, just a quick pulse and releasing it, okay, to break the contact. But discharging that 470 microfarad, okay, at 13 volts there, okay, approximately, into the coil, so the coil takes off, okay, and then falls back down. Well, while the coil takes off, okay, the flyback is collected by this diode here, okay, the Bedini style kind of thing. So then you're collecting the flyback, uh, then the positive terminal becomes the negative, and the negative becomes the positive, and here I have two LEDs, and I also have uh, these leads here are leading to this capacitor bank, which is three 30,000 microfarad capacitors in parallel, giving me a total of 90,000 microfarad there to get a very stable reading on the voltage. The reason I'm doing that is because I'm pulsing this at a very low frequency. We are under 4 hertz, so we're about at 3.75 hertz uh, that this circuit is resonating at. So it has to do with a combination of the weight of the magnet, the energy I'm triggering the coil with, it's, you know, all these combinations. So um, maybe I can start it up and you can see uh, how it uh, operates and that might give you a bit of an idea. Hang on. Okay, the circuit is operating. One thing I forgot to mention is this uh, terminal here, which is the small coil in this relay here, is being activated by my signal generator. So I'm using this probe here to uh, send the uh, voltage there to at the whatever frequency I select. And as you can see there, we're just before 4 hertz. I'm on the lowest uh, scale there. Now we have a total of 1.90, about close to 98 uh, volts across our two uh, diodes in parallel there. And you can see a slight pulse in the diode. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. And uh, that's because of an extremely low frequency. So the, uh, there's the uh, magnet, and you can see the magnet going up and down inside there. There's a top view there. There's a side view. So the magnet's coming down lower than what it is and gets compressed and gets shoot back up but all in the timing on the correct timing now if I change um, the frequency of my signal generator here you'll see that I just lowered it there okay And look at our diodes there. They've just pretty well extinguished. Okay, it can't keep it up. Okay, and if I raise it, here I am up to four. Okay, our voltage is going back up, but not as high. And if I keep raising it, again, our voltage stops and drops. And as you see, the magnet can't seem to follow, and there's no advantages in doing that. So we're just about at the end of this uh, allotted amount of time for videos here. And what I'll do is I'll do a second part to uh, continue showing you this and the data. Thanks for watching.